All right, everybody, welcome to Learn and Lead. And here we go, Eric. Well, good morning, everyone. It's very good to see you here. Thank you for joining us today. As you know, IQI is a 30-year leader in teaching the system of profound knowledge, and our Learn Then Lead sessions are a portion of the work that we do to uh, bring that knowledge to uh, the community, as well as to fulfill our mission of developing the next generation of transformational leaders. As a bit of a warm up, I'd like you to discuss at your tables briefly, and then type in the chat your responses. This says eight minutes, let's take five minutes for this. What are the learning objectives for developing leaders in your organization? And what should they be? Again, at your tables, please discuss what are the learning objectives for developing leaders in your organization and what should they be? And then type your responses in the chat. All right, thanks everyone. Those are good discussions that are going on at our tables. Please, when you take, please take a minute and, and jot a note or two in the chat regarding some of the thoughts that you shared with each other. One of the ways that we are able to uh, work with new and developing leaders is to actually acknowledge their capabilities for growth and development. And one of the best ways to support people's growth and development is to provide them with uh, leadership uh, training opportunities. And one of these really good ways of doing this is the IQI Academy for Leadership Fundamentals. Please register today at qualityandinnovation.org. As a reminder, we meet every third Tuesday in September on the 20th. Our speaker will be Tracy Ruiz. Tracy's a diversity, equity, and inclusion speaker. She'll be our session leader in September. She delivers dynamic presentations and motivational speeches with impactful content to engage you with a deeper level on a deeper level and give you tools to excel personally and professionally. Her multicultural female perspective as a 25 year trusted community police leader and decades of public policy experience qualifies her to connect with people globally and provide equitable, accessible insights. We're looking forward to having you with us in September and thanks for being here today, Tracy. I'm pleased to introduce today's session leader, Nicole Scheffler. She's been a tech diva for almost 20 years professionally. By day, she works as works in cybersecurity as a solutions director at Palo Alto Networks. At night, she is dedicated to spark success for women in technology careers with the Tech Diva Success Collection. She started her career in programming as, at a startup. She spent 15 years at Cisco Systems in engineering and in strategy and planning. Nicole also spent time at VMware as an enterprise engineering leader. She's the author and co-author of three best-selling books, including Pillars of Success with Jack Canfield. Nicole co-founded the Tech, the Diva Tech Talk podcast in 2015, which has won eight awards, providing a library of women sharing their inspirational and diverse career journeys to spur more women to enter or stay in technology. You can look at some of these, you can find this, these materials at www.techdivassuccess.com. Prior to that work, Nicole served on the IQI at that time, then CQI board of directors, working closely with Adrian Bass, setting up our events and managing tech behind the scenes. It's very good to have you with us again, Nicole. Thanks, Eric, really glad to be here. I know it's quality over quantity today, but I, uh... I hope you buckle up. We're going to go through a lot with the time left. So if you're ready, I can uh, maybe share my screen. Yes. Anything else? Last call That's for you. That's it. All right. That's it. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And I am very excited to be there. I'd like for everyone to kind of settle in to a spot where you could perhaps shut down all your distractions. I know everyone says this, but we're actually going to do a meditation. So I really do need you to... Um, to see if you could get into a spot to make the most out of this. Everyone could probably see my screen, um, you know, setting your GPS, finding your way in life. And I like to start with purpose and passion. 
And that's why I want to start with a meditation. So if I can have each of you, I know you're virtually setting, um, but play along with me for this short guided meditation, because what happens when we dive into imagery, when we use our imagination and we paint our own pictures of wherever uh, I'm about to take you on this magic carpet ride, then we actually connect to our higher selves. And when we connect to our higher selves, it allows us for any exercise, being the best leader we can be, um, thriving in your career, or even um, supporting your family or whatever it may be in the community in those seven areas of life. So what I want to do is just get grounded with a couple deep breaths. If you know, you're know you sitting there, please close your eyes, You know, close your door, whatever you need to do, put your phones down. This will only take um, you know, seven or eight minutes to go through. So what I want to do is um, we're going to use a type of yoga breathing where you take um, an, an inhale for like four counts. It's often box breathing. So you want to inhale one, two, three, four, let it sit for two seconds and then exhale a little bit longer than you an inhale, right? Twice as long. So exhale for eight breaths. So you want to um, finish that. <laughs> the speed of Nicole. We're just going to do a couple deep breaths before I get started, and I'm going to turn on some music. So I ask again, I'm going to take you through a guided meditation. We're going to go on a journey and try to see if we can tap into what's really inside of you and listen to your higher self. So I'm really excited to hear what um, how this goes. So please take another uh, full deep breath with an inhale for, for four. One, two, three, four. Hold. And out. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to be silent while you take a couple uh, deep breaths and get centered, grounded. Again, seating with your spine in an upright position, perhaps your eyes closed. And I'm going to turn off. Um, actually, I think I'm fine with the system. Allow yourself to feel uh, where you're sitting in your chair. Is, is your chair, is your back against the chair? What's the sensation of the hips and thighs on the seat of your chair with your feet grounded on the floor? We're still taking those beautiful deep breaths. So just become aware of the rise and fall of your chest when you inhale and your stomach as you let your body find your natural rhythm. As leaders in our fast paced society, it's hard to stop. Let's make the most of this time. Now, I want you to use your imagination. You're standing in the middle of a beautiful meadow. It's a field full of grass and beautiful wildflowers on a warm, sunny day somewhere in the countryside. As you look around, you could see a little breeze moving the top of the grass as it flows across the field. You see flowers of all the colors and you look up to the sky and see that it's mostly blue with a few white puffy clouds. The sun is shining. It's warm, but not too hot. As you feel the warmth of the sun on your skin, you can hear birds singing in the distance you realize that this is a very safe space. Because when you look out into the field, you see deer grazing. They're unconcerned because they too know it is safe. And off in the distance, there's a very tall mountain. You're very drawn to this mountain, so you begin to walk slowly towards it, enjoying every step. As you're walking, look around at the sights you see. Maybe there's more fields homes, a fairy cottage, <laughs> animals. Maybe you cross over a stream and you can hear the bubbling of the water on the rocks. You keep walking and eventually you arrive at the foot of a mountain. You stop, you look down and you notice what you're standing on. Look at your feet. What are we standing on? It might be rocks, a roadway, a sidewalk, grass, leaves, dirt, pine needles. 
Whatever it is to you, just notice it. And when you look back up again from your feet, you hear a sound to one side. And you look and you actually see a magic carpet. It's gently drifting towards you and it lands right in front of your feet. You feel drawn to sit on the carpet. And as you step onto it and sit down, this carpet very gently lifts you up slowly and flies you up the side of the mountain. As it gets higher and higher, you could feel the air growing a little cooler. And you notice that when you look around, you could see further and further. The higher you go, the wider your perspective. Eventually, you approach the top of the mountain and you see a beautiful, majestic temple. It's a beautiful spiritual building. It's speaking to you. It's adorned. It's at the top of this mountain. And the magic carpet brings you right in front of the doorway that leads into the temple. You land gently and get up and begin to walk into the temple. You realize it's a very sacred space. So as a way of honoring that, you reach down and take off your shoes. As you continue to go into the temple, notice how quiet it is, how peaceful, how sacred, and how silent. As you go further into the temple, you see at the far end, there's a beaming light coming down through a skylight. You can almost see little particles of dust dancing in the light and you find yourself drawn to this column of light and then you're standing right in front of it. You look up into the column of light and you begin to see floating down through the light a wise and loving being. It's floating down through this light until it lands right in front of you. And you notice something you haven't seen before. The being of light, this wonderful wise being, is carrying a beautiful golden box. They say, I've brought you a gift. And this gift will help you realize and understand your life's purpose. It's a symbol that represents the purpose for you. And it reaches out and hands you this box. You could feel it in your hands. You could feel the weight, the texture, and temperature. I want you to hold that box for a minute. With a lot of anticipation and excitement, you begin to open the box. See what's inside. When you see the gift in the box, you lift it out and hold it in your hands. You might want to look at it from different angles, turn it around, feel it. And this wise being reminds you that this gift is a symbol of your life's purpose or the next step of the life purpose that you're able to now understand. It says to you, if you have any questions about this purpose, the meaning of the symbol or anything related to it at all, you can ask me and I will answer. Then this wise and loving being says it's time for you to go take your gift with you and return to the bottom of the mountain. But before you do, this wise being offers you a warm embrace and a very nurturing hug. We all miss those. As you receive this embrace, you can feel the love and power of this being flooding into you, filling your heart, your mind, and your body with love, joy, strength, and the power to fully live your life's purpose. When it steps back and it says anything you need, I will always be here. Just return to this temple and I will be here to ask questions. So knowing you can return at any time, you look and they start to float back into the light. You're once again alone in the temple. Now as you leave, you stop, put on your shoes, 
holding this gift. As the magic carpet is waiting for you, you step back on it and sit down. As you do, it begins to slowly and gently, safely, begin the journey back down the mountain. You notice the ground coming closer. You can't see as far. And the air is getting warmer. Now you're landing right back where you started. As you step off the carpet, carrying your gift, you look down again and see where you're standing. And now you can become aware, starting with your feet, and start to rejoin us and feel a few last final breaths. And when you're ready, just stretch out your arms and legs, bring yourself back, and we're going to go into our breakout groups or find some tables. I'm going to stop sharing, and we're just going to quickly talk about this and share um, if you're comfortable, uh, what you gained from this, or perhaps what was in your box, but it's a very personal thing, so I'm going to stop sharing again and uh, come back into the space. Uh, I will share my screen now, but, you know, toggling back and looking at the chat, I would love to hear like it, what came out for you guys for that. Does anyone want to put it in the chat, like a takeaway that they got from really tapping into their higher being and pausing for a minute in our busy world and uh, listening to yourself? Were there any takeaways? Feel free to use the chat, the general chat. I know, uh, Eric, uh, I I think you're on stage, so I don't know if you could share, but it seemed like you definitely had a gift in your box. I can't ever share because I'm leading it, so I've seen lots of things in it, but I don't know if you wanted to share yours while we're waiting on any anything in the chat or... I, I can speak here. The experience that I had was one of um, calm and peacefulness, which is what you helped generate. And then surprisingly for me, the, the gift that, that uh, was in the box was... Um, the earth kind of an image of the earth that we see from from uh in space and and the planet is is the gift i was given so it's it was kind of surprising to me that that's what showed up and so thanks for doing that uh, guided meditation i appreciated that yes awesome yeah i love movement of breath there's a uh I guess a body of work called Art of Living that's out of India and it pieces together yoga, breathing and mindset. Uh, so I love to work with breath as well. So we're going to move through this and bring it all together. So what did you see in your box as you reflect on what's in your golden box? Um, and I know Tr Tracy probably has some amazing things in there. We were just about to hear yours. So sorry, I cut y'all off. Did you notice any theme or connection? So just like, um, Eric just mentioned, he saw the world. What does that mean? How does it apply to you? I hope you take this, if anything, as a gift from today <laughs> to be able to help um, create your divine self. That's what I do. I'm on a mission to spark success by leading and serving. I won't spend too much time on this, but although I like to, to cater my message to tech divas, women that are divine, making an impact in technology with vision and action, I would say that all of you are those things. All of you are divine individuals capable of impact, vision, and action. This happens to be the body of people I serve with this work, but I'm here to talk about it today because it applies to all of us. So I just like to serve uh, my people. Uh, this is my mentor, as mentioned. And one thing that he notices about successful people is just their positive. So um, I didn't give any pre-work to do a meditation, but I will provide... Um, some links in the chat shortly. And there's another one called the passion test. Uh, if you liked my meditation style, then you'll probably like it. It's got some stop and journaling exercises built into it um, as well. So we maintain a positive focus. So I want to talk a little bit about um, some concepts today. The first is taking 100% accountability as leaders when we're learning to lead, when we're learning to live our best lives, a life of success and significance on our terms not what anyone else defines for us, but really defining it for ourselves. Um, we need to take accountability for owning that fire, owning our mindset and owning and being accountable for things that happen. How do we do this? This is my simple formula. 
It's E-R-O, events that happen to you every day, and your response lead to an outcome. So for example, all of you are in this session today. There's an event, you signed up, you want to invest in yourself. Something about this message spoke to you and congratulations because it doesn't matter how many people are in the room. You're here for a reason. You're here to get a message. So when your response is positive, I'm going to try this meditation. I'm going to get something out of this. I'm going to take away one, hopefully three things that you can do from this presentation differently, better, learn to lead, learn to grow, right? And give that will give you an outcome. The thing is, when we look at our responses, it's all things in our life. Everything that happens to us is something that we created, we promoted, or we allowed happen to us. You created the login for this. You know, you something was promoted to you and you took it up, right? So our secret of life that I want to give you today is that when we look at this, and I'm the tech diva, right? So I think about all of these things in forms of data. If you have a spreadsheet that has three columns, you have events that are happening to you all day long. Someone pulls in front of you on the road. What's your response to that? Again, the power is in our response because we can always change that to make sure we're not creating, promoting, or allowing a response that garners a poor outcome. So the secret of life is when you total and you do equal sum, parentheses, <laughs> your outcome column, that is your life. And you know what? It's not always going to be positive. Maybe someone pulled out in front of you and it just ruined your day. And you know what? That's all right. But did it ruin your one-on-one -on -one with your boss? Did it ruin your customer meeting? Did it ruin, you know, your family time? We wouldn't want that to happen because if you let one outcome that's negative infect others, then your total, your, your life will not be as positive and fruitful. So I'd love to start with ERO because we tend to blame the event. Uh, we make complaints. We make excuses. Um, there's a lot of reasons why we like to look at the event instead of sitting in our point of power of our reaction. This is true for leaders as we grow. So just a reminder, really monitor your thoughts, beliefs, and actions, visual images. These are the foundational pieces of your response and try to counter those. If you catch yourself saying, oh, I just suck at technology. I'm never going to get this platform. I'm never, I don't get it. I'm lost say, I think I can get this, like try really reversing those negative um, situations. And that's how we can really become responsible, right? And 100% is a little overwhelming, <laughs> fully responsible. We're just going to all of a sudden be responsible for everything. But what if you just took 5% more accountability for your health? 5% more accountability to invest in yourself. 5% accountability to be a better friend better brother, better sister, you know, 5% more in that. And so what I like to do is set that in, in front. We're going to talk a little bit about goals. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because everyone knows about goals, right? I'm sure you're looking at this thinking vague goals produce vague results. Great. Nicole's going to talk about smart goals. Sure. You can't talk about smart goals. You can't talk about goals without having the smart framework, which we'll look at specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. But that's just the basics, okay? So there's actually seven areas uh, for goals. Sometimes it's eight, depending on which platform you're using. But a goal isn't just like, I have a goal to be awesome. I mean, they really break down into different areas of our lives. So too often I found that um, women, you know, women in tech, my audience, and many of you were here for the career journey. But how are you really talking about goals for fun? So I do encourage you to look at all those. In fact, I'm going to drop a link into the chat. Um, and what I'd like to do just for time is that the breakouts have seemed a little bit hard to move back and forth between. We're losing a little bit of time. So what I'd like to do is just see, um, and a lot of people's mics aren't working. I'm going to put a link in chat. What I want you to do is take action right now and click on this link and complete the wheel of life survey on a scale of one to 10. It will in two minutes or less allow you to rank those areas of your life. Don't overthink it. And when you come back and you're done with it, put done in the chat. I'm going to take it with you and rate our areas of our life and see where we stand. When you're done, don't delete the main screen. We're going to do an exercise once you're done. I'll be quiet you while you complete this.
You also have the freedom to skip areas if they're not important to you. But I hope you find all these to be important for your whole self. All right. You'll see the output. And click on save as PDF for that. Download that PDF. Save that. And then I want you to open your calendaring system. Whatever you use for a calendar, if it's your cell phone to put a reminder in. And I want you to go to one month from today, September 16th, Friday, September 16th. I want you to make a new meeting or a new task. And then just title it Wheel of Life Check-In or Wheel of Life or W-O-L. And I want you to hit attach and I want you to put that uploaded view or paste it in to that invite. Time blocking is very important for all of us. So now you should have your current wheel of life view from this exercise pasted or attached to a calendar invite for one month from now. So even if you did a screenshot and put it into a calendar, don't forget to add the um, link to the Wheel of Life survey so you can find it, but it's the new me Wheel of Life. It's very handy. And what we will do now is um, uh, go back and look at the framework just because I know that we didn't block like a ton of time for this. But I would like to hear in the chat for all of you, you know, scale of one to 10, how was this activity? Did you gain from it? And again, the idea is not only did you complete it, but you set up a time one month from now to check in with the existing scores. Because what happens then is you see that on August 16th, you rated your family at nine. And then on September 16th, you rate your family as a four. So by doing this method, it allows you to look at where you were and where you are now, and then see if the insight and actions that you took since you did this, I assume you want to look at this and say, man, if we're looking at this one on the side, my friends is only a five. When I take this low in the friend zone, I reach out and I meet a couple friends and then I take it again. And when you're creating this cadence, whether it's monthly, quarterly, I'd like for you to do it whenever you want. Just block it in there, put the last one in there and keep going. So I'm not seeing a lot of action in chat. That's why we're not doing a lot of breakouts, but um, we're going to keep on rocking it here. Okay, guys. So what I want to talk about is goal setting 101. This is my fire goal setting framework because again, everyone knows to make smart goals, but the three extra steps of goal setting, the law of attraction, visioning, <laughs> obviously I love visions and meditations, goal setting and affirmations all come into play. This is really how we win. The law of attraction, I mean, everyone probably knows this at a high level, where your mind goes, energy flows. So where's your mind going? Is it to the positive or to the negative? Because at the beginning, that's exactly what I said. Where your mind goes, energy flows. If you're positive, you're going to have the magnetic energy, the magnetic law of attraction for other things to come into fruition. So you have the ability to attract these things into your life. In fact, I did this myself. This was part of my true embodiment journey, um, hitting you know the tough spot we all did during... Uh, COVID, but really I had a year of my career where I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go to Hawaii. And I woke up every morning. Uh, that's a re reward trip at my work, right? At the time. And I woke up every morning and I listened to On a Beach in Hawaii by Ziggy Marley, which is an amazing song. On a beach in Hawaii. And I really visioned I was on that trip. Comes down to the trip. Wasn't sure if I was going to go. In fact, I got named into a position where I managed who got to go to the trip. So I thought, well, I'm probably not going to go to the trip. I'm the one who's picking the person who goes on the trip. Needless to say, I was eligible and I removed myself from the selection process and only managed the actual process. And it was the morning that I, that I was putting together my package and I knew my manager was going to call me and tell me if I had won this trip, if I made Chairman's Club. Huge honor for, for Cisco at the time. And I sat at my desk and I realized that by manifesting this end game, this reward trip, my performance over the last year had like significantly gotten better. The outcomes of what I gained from the journey of wanting to be the master of the craft, from the journey of wanting to achieve became the message. 
and I did get to touch a meat stain. <laughs> so I think when I started to embody it, I really got to see what it's, what it, what it was. And I realized that I was doing these things. I was attracting that success into my life. I was visioning what it was like, and you could do this. This is such an important part, you know, for all the seven areas to really pit stop, just like we did today. And we looked in the box, right? Can you take these seven areas over a week and really vision? Like, what do you, you're looking in the mirror. What is your best uh, health and appearance? Like, how do you, you know, what are you looking at? How can you find joy in that? What do you do for a job from the morning to the night? When you wake up, who are you talking to? What are you talking about? What are you doing for your work? Really live it out because then your actions become steps that you can take. And that's how you set your GPS is by visioning where you want to go. If we just get in the car and drive around, you're never going to make it to Chick-fil-A, right? You got to know I want Chick-fil-A. It's lunchtime. We're all getting hungry. So Chick-fil-A maybe, right? So visioning is very important. Um, and we'll take a pause in just a moment. And we'll, we're going to look at this, right? We're going to put this in action. So we have what we're attracting, and what I want you to keep in your mind right now is one goal I want you to bring into your mind now, one goal of yours, that if you did not achieve any other goals in the next year, you will have won by achieving this goal. It is your laser goal. We're going to take it through this process. We won't be able to do it all in this session, but this is what we're going to do in groups. You're going to write, what do I want to attract? If my goal is health, I want to attract body positivity, body image positivity, compassion, self-talk, right? My law of attraction is I'm with people that are health-minded and I'm going to stay health-minded and educated. And then what's your vision? Take it through a vision. And of course you need to write down your goals. We're going to write down one goal today. If you leave today and you don't have one goal written down, that's all I want you to do. That's what, this is what we're about to do. So I want you to put your mind's eye on that one goal because we are going to break out in groups. We are going to talk about these goals. It, there's so many templates out there, right? So however you do it is for you. Um, I have some as well that we'll use for this exercise. But if you have one that's a, for your work or one that you've been using, you know, a template that you could put this goal in, I don't encourage you to make it all about a career. It could be because you want to learn and lead and lead and learn, but it doesn't have to be, right? It's one goal you're very passionate about. Look at this. 80% of people never set goals. 80%. And 20% of the people that do, only 30% of those reach their goals. It's like that um, anchorman thing. Like it works 80% of the time, 20% of the time, right? Like this is, this is great odds. Like you've got this if you write it down and you keep yourself accountable. And that's why affirmations is the final piece. Whatever your goal is, you want to put an affirmation where you're acting as if you already have achieved that goal. So I'm using my health example for this one. I am feeling light, confident, and happy, enjoying a long life of beach trips with my family in summer 2023, right? You want to keep things I am and use an action word. I am feeling, I am excited, I am this. And it, it's acting as if you're not like, I'm going to feel great when I lose weight. No, I am feeling great living my best health life journey. And like add these things to it. So this is one that I think can really lock in um, goals. I'm looking right now at, you know, I keep my goals right across my desk so I can look at them when I kind of space out or I can just constantly see them. I have three just up there right now. Um, you know, my personal goals to positively impact a thousand tech divas. But like I need to add this affirmation to it. So when I look at that, I'm not saying, uh, you know, I'm fired up by the ability to impact 1,000 women, but I am elated and beyond words that I've achieved my goal of reaching 1,000 women with the Tech Diva Success Club by December 2023, you know? So this is the framework. Um, maybe you can take a screenshot of this because I don't think that once we leave the view, but what I want you to do is use this, and this is going to be the work that we do today. This is going to be one goal. Of course, I'd like for you to look at all those areas. You can use the Numi Wheel of Life. You can use my slide deck, whatever it is, but it should be for a certain area. You pick one of those areas, you write your goal down, and then you say how much by when, right? If my goal is to be healthy, then I want to have a full meal, meal plan implemented as routine by August, 
I need to have a personal trainer and commit to showing up to 80% of the sections by June, you know, whatever it is, right? How much by when? I always ask that. What do you need to do? I mean, a goal is a goal. You have to take actions for that area. And then you'll see the affirmation and you'll see what are some things that you can do. In fact, I have a little sticky note that Jack gave me. It's like a little set of sticky notes that I use that say, you know, the rule of five. Um, he believes you take your big goal and do five things a day. It's a little much for me since my big goal is uh, Tech Diva success. And I work full time as a director uh, for cyber, sec cyber security strategy. But I'm going to, um, again, if you want to take a screenshot of this, this is what we're going to use in our groups. I'm going to go around and I would just really love if you could write down one of these. Um, and then just simply uh, share your goal in writing in the chat so that we all know what's in written. So I'm going to do the uh, stop and we will stop at this point and get into our groups and apply this framework to really thinking about that goal.